This web clip summarizes uh, our experiments on predicting free decisions. My name is John Dylan Haynes, and I'm professor for theory and analysis of large-scale brain signals at the Bernstein Center for Computational Science in the Charity Medical School in Berlin. In the 1980s, Benjamin Libet performed uh, a very groundbreaking experiment. He got subjects to um, press buttons voluntarily at any point in time when they felt the urge to do so. Simultaneously, he asked them to remember where a rotating light point was when they made up their mind, when they made their decision. And by comparing these results, he found that um, the uh, time when people made up their mind was two to 300 milliseconds before they moved but that the brain activity, the so-called readiness potential, preceded the time when they believed to be making up their mind by another two to 300 milliseconds. So the brain started changing its activity pattern already before the decision. Now there are a number of debates and criticisms of this experiment. One of them would be that it's very difficult to judge timing based on a moving object. Another one is that Benjamin Libet's experiments only showed average results. Um, and it might be the case that in some trials, subjects made decisions, but there was no readiness potential. Or there might have been a readiness potential and subjects made no decision. Another problem is that the experiments weren't content specific. If people make intentions, then these intentions tend to be specific. I plan to do one thing versus another. Um, so that's another question that remains to be answered. And because the experiments relied on the so-called readiness potential, they were only able to record activity from motor-related brain areas, uh, which is something that we also aim to overcome in our experiments. 2008, with PhD student Chan Seung Sun from Singapore, we did a revised version of the Libet experiment in the MRI scan. Subjects were given the button in the left and in the right hand, and they were asked at some point when they felt that they wanted to make the decision to spontaneously make up their mind and choose either to press the left or right button. Simultaneously in the background, there was a letter stream that changed every half second, and they were asked to remember which letter was on the screen when they made up their mind. So, for example, they might have made up their mind at this point in time to press the right button, and then they're presented with various alternative letters that might have been on the screen, and they're asked which letter was on the screen when you made up your mind, and they might have said the letter H. This means that they made up their mind at this point in time when the letter H was on the screen, and anything before that might be loosely defined as an unconscious determinant um, of the decision, something that happens before the decision and predicts the outcome of the decision. In order to find out um, which brain signals might predict the choices, we um, use pattern classification approaches. We train a pattern classifier um, on each time point preceding the decision. The decision can be seen here schematically as a vertical red line. And found, first of all, that after the decision, as expected, uh, the choices could be um, decoded with these classifiers from motor-related brain areas, so primary motor cortex and supplementary motor area. Um, you can see here, decoding accuracy is on the y-axis, and the x-axis shows time. And you can see that after the point in time when they make up their mind, the decoding accuracy increases in these motor-related brain areas. This just shows a sanity check of our data analysis. Then we looked which brain areas might predict the choices before people make up their mind. And we found that in frontopolar regions and medial parietal regions, there, were, um, there was predictive information prior to the choice, up to seven seconds before people made up their mind. The predictive accuracy wasn't very high, but it was significant. So could it be that subjects just made up their mind early and then responded later? 
This is not very likely because we know that as soon as subjects have decided which button to press, we should be able to decode from motor cortex. However, the time lag was quite extreme between the information in frontopolar cortex and the motor cortex. Could it have been that we're just picking up some spillover from the previous trial? This is not very likely because the information goes up with distance from the previous trial and we can't predict the next trial. We also validated that this was not just something to do with motor decisions, but that also complex decisions, such as, for example, a decision to add or subtract numbers, would um, show um, this predictive brain activity. So subjects in this experiment we published in 2013 um, got to choose whether they wanted to add or subtract numbers. And again, we found but before they made up their mind, in this case four seconds before they made up their mind, we could decode the abstract decisions from, again, prefrontal cortex and medial parietal cortex. We also asked the question how this is related to the default network. We know that the default network is particularly active when people are at rest. They might be daydreaming or something else. So we extracted the activity profile in the default network and compared it to the decoding accuracy. And what you can see here is that the um, uh, default mode activity is high still during the period where the predictive information is present. So that means that at the time when we found this predictive information, subjects presumably weren't recovering from the rest and kind of trying to engage in the task again, but instead they are still in a resting mode. So this again suggests that this brain activity is not related to anything to do with the subject's engagement in the task. What are the models that might explain this findings? Well, first of all, it could be that the decision actually starts very early, that it starts several seconds before people make up their mind, but it's just our inadequacy in measuring this decision. Another possibility could be that the early signals just bias the decision and that's the reason why we can only partially predict them. There is no more information than that. Another possibility could be that it has to do with the autocorrelation of the brain signals. Um, and this is something, of course, that still requires further research. Thanks uh, for listening, and I'd like to point out that this work was done at the Bernstein Center for Neuroscience and the Berlin Neuroimaging Center. Thanks.